Be on. <laughs> Hi, this is the Change and Grow Wellness Show, the show for you, the busy professional who wants to live a healthier, happier life with increased energy and productivity. And I'm Jackie Grant, and I'm your host. And tonight we are talking about preventative better than cure. What can you do for ourselves? And we've got Tara Whittle, who is going to be telling us so much about what we can do for ourselves. So we're going to talk really about self-care, what you can do to embrace in your life in order for you to be your own health improvement person. So welcome, Tara. Thank you, Jackie. Lovely to see you this evening. <laughs> Great. Um, so, yeah, so where should we start? So basically, so so preventative self-care. So we are now in an age where a lot of us are more informed about our health care. Um, so preventative self-care includes um, things like looking at our genetics i mean a lot of us like nowadays if you try and get insurance that kind of thing you've got to tell people about 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 things that are in your family um so it's genetic predisposition to health there's lifestyle choices so it might be that we go completely the lifestyle choices that our family and friends have but sometimes we follow those um also environmental factors so many of us leading busy lives a lot of us that are working in areas where we are working really hard we're working hard emotionally and we're working hard and um, we're not maybe sleeping might find it difficult to wind down we might be working in jobs where it's quite physically demanding and that can really cause us to have weakness and weak areas and weak spots including stress and stress is one of the things that, that can really really impact on us all and that can lead to other lifestyle for nutrition maybe um, in the digital age we're often just sat at the computer a lot of the time or in our cars so that can be quite difficult so um in terms of proactive medical care or proactive self-care you have to have a bit of informed self-care so some some of us don't really know what we can do because we're so busy stuck in that cycle and stuck in that wrap that it's quite difficult to sort of understand and in the health system so my background i'm an occupational therapist i work in healthcare. I'm setting up a charity. We're basically setting up a whole host of services like a holistic NHS so we can inform people and support people with opportunities and choices. Um, but my my mum has bipolar, so I've been a carer all my life and my dad has serious health, health difficulties. But instead of seeing that, so you can look at the glass as half full, you can look at the glass as half empty, can't you? But it's, it's trying to find ways where we can change things. So Tara, tell us a little bit about, you know, you you mentioned slightly about what you do because you're the founder of Roots to Wellbeing. Tell us a bit about what made you start that um, charity. Oh, well, so many things. So um, I actually had um, so I had a I'm 46 now and I had a TIA a mini stroke a few years ago, um, and I've also got I've actually got what they've reclassified as something called Ellos Danlos syndrome, which includes hypermobility and problems with connective tissue. So I have difficulty with my joints, but my joints are out. And, um, I actually had free brief psychosis myself as well. I'm really sensitive to medication, and again, we're all different in the way we are. And obviously, I'd worked in healthcare for a long time in mental health. My mum has been in like the long stay institutions, and she was a nurse. And like, I just wanted to look at instead of like thinking like, how can I get out more? how can I do more for myself how can I learn to look after myself more because at the end of the day you know we all know where our weak spots are I've got a tear in my left knee for instance I should have had an arthroscopy probably about 10 years ago but instead of doing that I found things like nausea walking to be really useful because you're using poles I do like a lot of people for health and I've met some like-minded people and we look at activities around what is called the five days to well-being which is a really good model which helps us think of ways we can connect take notice keep learning be active and give and give isn't just about material goods giving for us as busy people is about us giving ourselves time and credit for so in terms of how people can you know utilize that framework what what are the key things that they could do because you're saying about the five um five um ways of well-being 
So let's let's take a deeper look at that. So connect. Where where did what what would you need to be doing in that sphere? I mean, thank you, Jackie. I think connecting is about us as as beings. We're innate beings. We like to connect with others. Whether we see ourselves as introverts or extroverts, we like to connect with others. In person is great. So I mean, there's lots. It, within communities. Communities are now coming together because we've got such a dearth of services. I mean, I work in both public health and social care and um, there's, there's because of all the lack and all the, all of the changes, there, there are so many amazing things that are going on. You know, there's in parks, in benches now, they've got benches where they stick a label on and say it's a bench where you can sit and talk to someone. You know, people are quite lonely, especially in London and in busy cities. Like, you can be quite lonely. You can be in a really busy environment and feel quite lonely. So it's finding things that, that meet your needs. So whether it's a walk in the park, it might be going to um, defend an animal, like, connecting with another being and um, going for a cup of tea somewhere going to somewhere where you can talk going into the library I mean I know a lot of libraries are closing but there are still I mean Newham for instance are working on a Thursday and they have a lovely library there and they have a lot of services there where you could connect so connecting is really important taking notice is things like taking notice of how you feel before you go off and rush with the parties and, and rush to work just take five minutes just take five minutes to take notice check in with yourself there's lots of techniques that you can do to help you check in with yourself one is emotional freedom technique or eft tapping and there's a different version of that now called hop a no no where you say um you acknowledge like thank you um i'm sorry which we all have um so eft tapping is very good because you can tune in to how you're feeling at that moment in time you might have a bit in your tummy you an anxious, an anxiety in your tummy say so it's, it's tuning in to that give it a color give it a shape if you can give it an out of 10 and then start the sequence um jin shin breathing is very good for that as well you just hold a different finger and with your breathing when you're taking notice Often when we're feeling stressed, we hyperventilate. We breathe in too much oxygen. So slowing your breathing down. So mm. some people think that 7-Eleven breathing, but personally, when I've worked with anxiety and I, I have panic attacks, I find that a bit too much because it's 7 in and, you're, oh, and 11 out. That's quite difficult if, you're, if you've got a rate of high. Exactly. Mm. So things like breathing in for free, either through your nose or through your mouth, breathing for free, breathe right into your belly. Hold it for one and breathe out for six and just slow breaths out. So connecting, um, there's lots of amazing free meditation apps out there. Um, Deepak Chopra and Oprah Winfrey do a free 21-day meditation. Um, it just started last week. And they do that every three months with a different theme. And you can purchase them afterwards, but there's no, you don't have to. And there's, a, uh, there's a wellbeing summit that's going to be taking place soon, which is free as well. I can send you a link for that, um, which yeah. is with Deepak and um, Russell Brand and there's lots of people there so connecting with yourself whether it's doing a five minute DVD on yoga maybe or finding something that helps you take notice of how am I feeling in my body a bath mm. if you haven't got if you can't access the bath put some Epsom salts in a foot bath and just sit and soak Epsom salts are full of magnesium sulfate it's really good for your body it's really good to help you relax mm. um, if, you, if you have essential oils you can mix some essential oils with that so taking notice take notice when you're eating mm. how many times do we eat with the television turned on how many times are we just eating random junk food I mean in the UK we, we eat so much unhealthy foods compared to our other European counterparts don't we and often it's because we're busy 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 and we mm. don't to stop and eat do we we're how many people eat their lunch at their desk i mean i know i used to um until i i thought wait a minute i was stuck before really ill and i was yeah. working in areas and i was going in i'd take notice of my lunch i'd take 15 even if it was 15 minutes it's better than none i'll just sit on the bench just just slowly eat a little bit of my food take in i mean it was awful i was in the middle of an industrial area but actually just zoning putting my feet on the earth just grounding so you've got connect you've got take notice so, so taking just, notice. all right i just want to take you back to taking notice because i think you said was it open up um was it uh the one that goes oh i love you please forgive me thank yeah. you i'm sorry yeah. yes kind of um 
flipped out at that point. Oh, okay. Okay, so Hopa No No is... It's Hopa No, that's it. Hopa No, yeah. So it's... Yeah. Um, Basically, my colleague who um, I'm setting up the charity with, she's a um, master EFT practitioner, emotional freedom technique. And there's a lot of mindfulness practitioners now that are using Hopa No No because it's about us acknowledging ourselves. It's four words, and you can use that with tapping. And mm -hmm. just you don't realize what your most of fear, worry, and frustration comes from us directing us that at ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, how many times have you? I felt just out of nowhere, just like we had the full moon yesterday and I'm sure most of us would have got cut up in our cars by people that are just running around and not paying attention. Um, so being able to do the hopper no-no, I mean, I find tackling very useful if I'm in the car. Mm. What I find useful is the gin shin breathing. The middle finger is about anger and frustration. So if you're being just feeling, if you're stuck in traffic saying, you're, you know, I drive on the M11 from London back into Harlow, Holding that middle finger again, slow your breathing down, breathe in for three, hold for one, breathe out for six. And each out breath, just imagine letting go of any of that tension. Um, so that's really useful. And the thumb, holding the thumb, and I don't so it's really tight. I mean, just nurturing it, holding the thumb. Think about babies. Who tells babies to suck their thumb? Nobody. Your thumb is about worry. How many times have you found yourself with your fingers doing stuff like this if you're worried? So the thumb is worry. This finger here, the point of the finger is fear. And you think about fear as well. People are often unkind to us when they're scared. You know, you, that's when you, 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 you say things that you might regret. You've got mm. fear. You've got um, this. The ring finger is about grief and letting go. Now, for a lot of my clients, I've got over 200 people now been out on the walk age 8 to 84 with 90 percent with long-term conditions and disabilities and recovering from injury if i've got someone with respiratory disability, i get them to hold the ring finger mm. and just breathe into that and one side of your body is your yin which is your left side which is your feminine and the other side of your body is your yang you might find you get a different response if you hold the finger on the other side of the in one side is that <laughs> <laughs> so keep learning what's 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 the element in that well everything we do listening to your lovely show today and um, connect with you obviously i'm learning from you we you know you learn from your environment don't we we learn from each other and mm. um, I, th I think what we need to do is be more open to learning I i'm always open to learning i, I didn't finish school my mum was in and out of clayby hospital so i went back and did adult ed and then i went and did a degree um, but I've got to file that thick with certificates. But that isn't just how you learn. You don't just learn on a certified course, do you? You learn at the bus stop. You learn from, you know, this is why intergenerational work is so important. You know, we've been segregating our elderly people in this country for years. I mean, I worked in elderly persons care. You know, look at these wonderful projects when you've got young children working with um, older adults i mean how amazing is that because they're going to learn aren't they they're going to really learn so just absorbing everything with your senses with your five senses with your proprioception with your gut instinct you know just learning as you go along so whatever that be you know make it make time to read a couple of pages of a book or or just research something because sometimes as well when we don't learn and when we think we know something, that's when false beliefs come into play. I won't talk politics because that would take all day. But, you know, that's how yeah. these <laughs> we end up in these messes, don't we? Because we think we know. Oh, I know that. I know. And do you know what? It's really interesting. Of all the people that I work with, when I work with someone who comes, who is maybe a nurse or working in healthcare, they are the hardest ones to support a lot of the time because i say oh you know, do you know about eft tapping for instance oh yeah i know about that <laughs> are you using it it's a different thing isn't it you yeah. might know about it but if you're really honest with yourself you might not be using it do you know what i mean so learning is about us letting go of the ego sometimes and just going actually this person's got a viewpoint let me listen let me listen mm -hmm. but the next one um is being active so activity doesn't have to be running the marathon you, know, you do some amazing work like i feel a bit embarrassed that i've just been a work where well, we were just um finalists in five different sports events. and i'm someone who can't catch a ball because i'm i'm dyslexic <laughs> i'm like oh my god 
sports. But it is, I suppose, walking is a sport, isn't it? It's it's getting people outdoors. You know, it could be chair-based exercises. I mean, I teach Tai Chi for Health, which the motto for Tai Chi for Health is do no harm. Mm. You're not going to be standing on one leg. You're not going to be doing complicated moves. So it's suitable for people lying down or sitting down so you don't have to make it so complicated. Mm. But if someone wants to train for the marathon, it might be that you like, want to do some breathing exercises. Technically, that's an activity, is it not? Um, you know, it could be, I mean, a lot of people come to me, I used to teach swimming, um, and but swimming is great because you can walk in the water. Just because you can't swim, walking in the water with gravity eliminated is very good rehab. So, you know, that can be a really, really good activity for people to do. Maybe find something different. Gardening is a, is a physical activity. Um, it could be that you and, – and for some people, you could have raised flower beds. So if you're walking down, you don't have to be physically getting up and, and running around to be active. Mm. Okay. The, other, the other ones, back to taking notice, if you're outdoors – personally, I do a lot of activity outdoors, as I know you do um, – and that whole thing of being in a green gym, mm. so many people, you've got the connection, you are taking notice, you're learning from your environment and you're being active. So that's a really good thing to be able to do. And then give, as I said before, give is just about giving yourself credit, giving yourself time, giving yourself acknowledgement. Um, you know, you know I, I have a lot of busy women that come um, out on and we don't make it compulsory that you have to come every week. And, you know, we, like I said, we're up to over 200 on the list. We were running up to nine walks a week. We're doing about six to seven at the moment in the colder months. But I love it that people can drop in, drop out. We, yeah. also, um, we also run um, regular gong baths. So one of the activities that we're doing, which is sound therapy. Again, that's a lovely way to give yourself time because mm. the crowd is over you. It puts the brain into it. So an alpha the beta, then a better brain wave, which is yeah. very simple when you're going to sleep. It's just like mm. complete. Mm. And again, if we're giving yourself that time, and more often than not, we're in such a state of flux, aren't we? We're so busy, busy, busy. I mean, I saw I had um, two walks a day, and on the second walk, we make it more mindful. And we were slowing down and doing some Tai Chi for health under the trees, the canopy of the trees, and the beautiful colour of the leaves. And, you know, it took a while for a lot of my – um, clients today to to actually wind down. Yeah. I could see that they were wearing here, and actually, when you get into that state of being, we have a state of doing, which is doing, doing, doing. I'm busy because of A, B, C. I can't because. Of but actually, when you get into more of a state of being, which is our sacred feminine, which is our, our left side, and also for men, it's that you know, it's 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 that feeling of being as opposed to doing all the time, and that's when you know your blood pressure comes down if you. You know, you might have high blood pressure. It might be when when your stress responses and the cortisone and the adrenaline running your, through your body is starting to slow down. So if you can go give yourself um, and go into more of a being mode, or it could be that you have maybe aren't working. Maybe you've been so stressed that you're not working at the moment. Maybe giving yourself some time to try some volunteering opportunity. Try something that can float your boat that you might not have thought of doing before because you've given a very pressurised job. Mm. so yeah it's it's just um it's about kindness really it's about self-kindness and and care and you know you would not say the things that we say to ourselves in our minds we wouldn't say to our friends would we we wouldn't say them to our family the stress and the impact and it's hard to break those lines like I say generationally that can be difficult a lot of us have come from trauma um, a lot of us have had experiences in our lives that maybe have um, left us with with scars, whether they're physical or emotional. And then we, you know, you often hear yourself talking as you get older. You start to sound like your mum or your dad, or you <laughs> don't want to. You start to look like them too. <laughs> You're like, oh no, who's that? But um, you know, it's about us. You can you can break the chain. You can you don't have to be that person that you've cared for or looked after. And again, a lot of us are carers. I've been a carer, like I say, most of my life. And carers tend to neglect self-care. And part of the work we've been doing, we've gone into carers' services. We're actually going into um, permitted housing schemes in Harlow at the moment, which is um, these these office blocks that have been turned into flats where people have been moved out from London 
um, into places where they maybe haven't got so much space and they, they're they feeling alienated, they're feeling isolated, they've been taken away from their families, they might have some, some complex needs or, you know, diff, you know, things that have been challenging yeah. for them and they're taken away from their environment. So, again, it's teaching that self-care. It's just, you know, making sure that that is a message that we can get across and we can support others. And I, I, I've been there. I, like I said, I've been unwell myself, so I, I don't want... And um, I, I know that fine line. I'm, I need to write. I'm, I'm in the process of writing my own care plan at the moment. I've had these like couple of psychosis, so I need to make sure everyone around me knows what isn't okay when I'm not okay, and knows that I'm I'm willing to accept help. And some of it is that it's about our work to change, isn't it? We can't because no one you can't force anybody into um into changing like in terms of behavior can you so it's about just showing what's on offer and 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 giving giving freedom and it doesn't have to cost lots of money yeah i mean giving so, yourself Sarah, tell me what would you say to someone that was thinking right i need to kind of start to build in self care like what one thing would you say to someone that was thinking of doing that i think it's about planning and maybe look at your schedule do i do i okay so maybe you're using public transport for instance do i have time to listen to a podcast do i have time there can i bring some essential oils can i create a mini environment you know i i've worked in secure services where people were in real difficult conditions you know really you've got someone screaming in the background and you're you know i've it's about creating a micro environment can i create a micro environment between my journey where i can where I can zone out, where I can do, where I can read, where I can, what, what, what makes me feel relaxed? Um, things like winding down like you would with a child at least an hour before bedtime. For sure. Because for mm. how many of us, we're on the screen, we're on telly, mm. we're going to film to wind down, we might have a glass of wine. Mm. Fair enough, these are things that can help us. But it comes a time when maybe we're overloading the system and we need to unwind from the system. Um, hard this time of year to start, but you know, getting up five minutes earlier, getting up ten minutes earlier. I mean, with with Deepak Chopra and um, the Oprah Winfrey meditation, it's free at the moment. I've got that on my phone. It's twenty minutes. So what I do is get up half an hour earlier, maybe go to the toilet, go back to bed, so I'm nice and warm. Listen to that and then set an yeah. alarm for five minutes. Before place I fall back to sleep but I've, I would have absorbed that I would have been in place wash my face so I felt fresh and listen to that meditation before I go on for the rest of my day so it's about treating your self-care like you would treat work and productivity it's about treating yourself like you would a family member or a client or um, someone whom you care for so maybe get out of that oh I can't I can't I can't because of this this and this and treat yourself like a third person brilliant so, Tara, where can people find you? Um, so we have a Facebook page called um, so Roots to Wellbeing, as in Tree Roots, R O O T S. And there's a picture of like a person with five leaves, which represent the five ways to wellbeing. We also have a website um called Roots to Wellbeing dot org, and I can be emailed at Tara T A R A at Roots to Wellbeing dot org. So what we're doing hasn't been done before. We are setting up a pioneering charity, so we're a non for profit currently and our aim is to set up as a KEO, a community incorporated organization and we have collaborated with lots of people like your, your wonderful self we've we've um done lots of events um we're bringing to forefront what what is what is possible and we're trying to make that all inclusive inc inclusive financially inclusive but also so we can bring people together to be able to be the best that they can be and have all these opportunities brilliant so thank you taria that was really informative i'm sure it's given people loads of tips in terms of them starting to build in some self-care for themselves and really taking time to step back and think about them and think about how they can build in this kind of preventative care for themselves so thank you very much for being on and it's been <laughs> wonderful and Guys, I will see you soon and we will be back with the Change and Grow Wellness Show next week as usual. So take care. Bye. <laughs>